So the other day I saw this short from Minslave who talked about the fact that many Genshin players have for some reason like to say amongst all the Archons that we've known in the game that Venti is the one that had the most unalive count in the game's lore history. This means Venti can't have the highest kill count in the Archon War and I'm surprised that many think he does. At first I just sat there and thought, yeah that's actually kind of funny because quite frankly she's very right because as someone who perused the Genshin lore and its communities quite often, this was a lore piece that many people loved to throw around back in the early days and some still blurt it out today thinking that it's the actual thing. While Minsleaf did a good job explaining in that short why this statement was canonically inaccurate or at the very least why there is someone else who is more suitable for that title, but I also kind of want to dive a bit deeper as to why Venti wouldn't have been the one with that title. In fact, I'd go as far to say that alongside the Dendra Archon, he's probably one of the ones who wouldn't be anywhere near gaining that moniker. Without further ado, the name's Leafy, and welcome back to Let's Talk Slow About Games, Genshin Edition. I'm gonna start us off by expanding on what Minsleaf had said about how there are other Archons who would be better suited for the title of the bloodiest Archon. The obvious choice is of course the warrior god himself, Morax. And as a lot of you would have already known that his fight in the Archon Wars against all the other gods and deities of Liyue was so bloody that the rivers of Liyue become red with all the blood that was flowing through it. And as the side effect of all the gods that Zhongli has sealed away, Karmic Death became something that corrupted people's souls and was a fatal problem even for divine Yakshas that were summoned to deal with them. If that wasn't enough to signify the brutality that Morax had to go through, then I don't know what will. Another more suitable candidate than Barbados would have been A or Beelzebul. As we know, while Makoto or Baal was initially the Archon who sort of directly rules over the people of Inazuma and she would be the one to handle the more diplomatic side of ruling, A was the one who would settle the more violent conflicts. Big ass dead snake in Yashiori Island? Yep, that's our queen's doing. And these alternatives are only considering the Archons that we already know about. We don't know the history behind what the Pyro Archons have done, and we most certainly know that the Saritsa might have had quite some blood spilled under her command, so amongst the seven, we can safely say that there are plenty of other options other than Venti for the title of the most kill count. But a bigger reason that I think we should discuss is not regarding the other options, but also regarding Venti himself, because I think those who are going around spouting about how powerful he is needs to understand that those powers of his contribute nothing to how he governs himself as an Archon. And of course, no one should dispute the fact that he was indeed powerful, but he definitely wasn't the type to be going around trying to score some war crime points for himself. Number one biggest reason is the Archon War. Now the history between the timeline of Mondstadt's own Archon War and the timeline of the rest of the Archon War is kinda blurry. But what we do know is that all the power struggles and fight for the right to the seven seats finished about 2000 years before the events of Genshin itself. Now in Mondstadt's portion of the war, it is said to have finished about 2600 years ago. So as far as we can tell, it is currently the segment of the war which ended on a much earlier note compared to the rest of the regions, as far as we know. For those of you who weren't familiar with Venti or Barbados's original form in the lore, he wasn't actually someone who had significant powers in the beginning. He was just a tiny elemental spirit born out of the winds that surrounded the entirety of Mondstadt, which at the time was just a wasteland that was constantly barraged by icy blizzards. The two big boy gods of Mondstadt at the time were the Caribbean, who commanded the power of the wind, and Boreas, who we now know as Andreas, who commanded ice. Boreas was the source of that icy blizzard that Mondstadt was constantly plagued with, while the Caribbean was the one who ruled over old Mondstadt, providing the city with towering walls made out of storms that protected anyone within it from the harsh blizzards. Now this might seem like a good thing, and the Caribbean thought so too, but the people he ruled over actually felt imprisoned by this wall and they simply bowed down to him out of fear. Boreas actually wanted to throw hands with the Caribbean, but found that he couldn't land a hit on his tower, and two, the Caribbean also just doesn't seem to give the slightest bit of shits about fighting him. Now, where Venti actually came into play was when he met the Nameless Bard. I'm sure a lot of you who actually reads the story will know this part already. 
The Bard wanted freedom from the Wall of Storms. Venti then befriended the Gunhilder clan, which started to worship him, giving him more power in the process. They then made an army out of the Caribbean's oppressed people, which was also joined by the Caribbean's former lover Amos, and a knight who kinda looks like Diluc, who apparently wasn't a Ragnavender until his descendants eventually became the Ragnavenders. They then took down the Caribbean, but also losing the Nameless Bard and Amos in the process. In the end, Boreas, who was probably still more powerful than Venti at the time, decided that he was unworthy to rule the people of Mondstadt because he just couldn't understand them and realized that his icy blizzards did nothing but hurt people. So he chose to die alongside ceding his powers to restore Mondstadt's nature. That and he also thought that human society was kinda shit, so... Fair dues, I suppose, big man. So that left Venti as being the one people worshipped, and his powers simply kept growing as he also ascended to being the only animal archon in history to this day. At this point, some of you might think, now is the time he starts to get some blood in his hands since he got all that power and stuff, and have people think that he was the one with the highest kill count as an archon. And well, you couldn't be any further from the truth, honestly. All the guy did was get his power, morbidly took form of his dead bard friend because I guess that's what you do? Terraform Mondstadt until it became livable and free off of snow, made it usable for his people and taught them how to prosper from it and then he just says, alright, you guys got this, peace out. And he was never to be seen again over the next thousand years. <laughs> Even when he then came back to help Vanessa solve Mondstadt's aristocracy problems, he only gave her guidance and power to stand up against their tyrant oppressors. Vanessa kinda did the rest of the work by herself, and Venti was kinda more interested in just being a free bard and a free soul. I guess you could argue that instead of having the highest kill count amongst the Archons, he probably deserved the title of having the most kill assist in history, cause he sure did empower a crap ton of people to rise up against different shtick. And from where I come from, support skills, they definitely do count as assist, so I guess we can give him that title instead? That's about all I have for this quick video, I just found it funny when I saw that short cause I do go around the lore community quite often and I did remember seeing that statement being quite a thing that people used to say. There was actually a decent amount of reddit and forum posts who just outright decree Venti as the one who had the most blood in his hands and people were agreeing in the comment sections. So I just decided to make this video to think about how funny of a time that was. Big thanks to Minsleaf of course for making that short and being the lore god that she is. Do check her out if you somehow haven't. If you like this video then hit the thumbs up if you want to and feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below if you have any. Until the next video, my name's Leafy and I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.